let's jump into this um to this uh AI conversation. So I I, I mm-hmm. spoke to you and I asked you, you know, I'm like, yo, you think you, you know, you want to come on Market Mondays? And you was like, yeah, you know, I want to talk about a few different things. He's like, this AI situation, uh, specifically, I guess there's a lot of stuff happening. So um what do the people need to know about the latest developments in artificial intelligence? Well, you know, um <clears throat> back in 2019, I labeled this as a decade of AI, right? And that decade of AI is artificial intelligence, artificial insemination, right? Artificial ingredients, right? Um, so when I'm talking about artificial ingredients, you know, I'm talking about like being able to make food, right? Like beyond me, impossible meat. We know we're in a food crisis. Uh, we know we are in a uh, baby bus crisis. Not that many babies are being born. But right now in the technological development, artificial intelligence is talking about all of these new ways where people can automate things where you no longer need human beings, right? So one of the biggest things right now, if you look at what Google is getting into it, uh, Microsoft, all of the companies across the board, and there's something called Mid Journey, and there's one called Dolly 2. Now, both of these are basically platforms where you can type in descriptions of ideas and they will generate oh, yeah. things, right now it's been going crazy and, and let me tell you you know I'm, I'm telling your audience this but you know a lot of people ain't sharing this game because there's a lot of ways to monetize this right now right so a lot of things that you may be doing in your business can be replaced by ai instantaneously right um and i'm not trying to put people out of jobs but your industry is already being threatened so graphic artists and graphic designers your industry is threats right now right being able to create thumbnails and not only just creating pictures because it can generate just about any picture you want to in a matter of seconds and give you options remaster it make it creative or make it exactly how you want to so now the ability for human beings to completely master their imagination is right at their fingertips and it doesn't require somebody to be you know a genius but that's why i always said that this is the time of creatives it's not the time of hard workers. It's a time of creators because the tools have been built. So I've been playing around with this a lot, right? Um, And I've been utilizing it, utilizing it for thumbnails. I've been utilizing it to create content with. Uh, I've been teaching and training my team with it so that we can create content because we got everybody needs to create content for their business. So right now, generating consistent content flow is key, especially during these recessionary times, right? So number one, I wanted to start off there, and there's actually tons of AI programs such as, you know, text to video prompt. Um, Mm -hmm. There's ways to create full length speeches, full length, um, you know, um, captions and text. Like there's so many automation tools right now. It's getting ridiculous out there. And the average person knows zero percent about it. And that's one of the things that I'm very engaged on teaching right now. Keys, I, I want to talk to you about the 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 battle between corporate and creative, right? Because a lot of times, pe- when when people are creative, corporate can still that 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 creativity and make it their own. So, how does one approach this new space, right, from the creative standpoint? When we know there's a big juggernaut and a big Goliath that's out there that's watching as well. Well, I think it's the same thing of approaching the media space for creatives that got into social media. You understand me? Um, everybody has the opportunity to use it, but how you use it is going to make you stand out. Right. There's going to be a lot of people that's going to resist that are purists to the art that's going to say, well, we don't believe this is real art. We think it's unfair. The emerging markets don't care about your feelings. Facts. They just don't. It's going to happen whether you like it or not. And I believe that, yes, unfortunately, it will put a lot of people who spent their whole life cultivating a skill set out of business in one area. But if those same people actually have a head start, because everybody's not going to be equal at utilizing this tool. The reason why, because everybody doesn't know how to generate what they call prompt, right? So if you're creating a picture, if you're already a photographer, you're going to speak directly to the AI in a way where you say, I need you to make it with low light. Or if you're a graphic designer that generates games, you're going to say, I need you to render in Octane 8K. So you're going to have design language in a way you can put it together, and that's called prompt engineering. So prompt engineering is a new skill set that most people have never heard about whatsoever. So there's, and and that's the same thing with like um, great communicators that can greatly describe things. It's going to help 
the AI generate more robust pictures. And I've seen some people utilize this that are creatives where they take a base picture for a design because typically when you're creating a prototype with something, it's going to take you a few days, maybe a few weeks to sketch out something depending on who you're working with. Throughout time, it's been getting shorter and shorter. Now it's instantaneous, right? So now it's cutting down the time that you need in order to get things done. So I would just say that creatives need to add it into their flow and master it because Absolutely. these companies, as a CEO, as a founder, you're still not going to want to use the tool yourself. You still will have to hire a prop engineer. You still have to hire people who are masters at it. But now you can have a greater expectation of workflow for them because now they have these tools that are automated and faster. So I think just a partnership relationship with corporate. Now, getting into the software side, if you want to make billions of dollars, that's different. But when you're talking about creating a business model to where you can monetize this, I think it's infinite. But it really depends on your creativity. I don't know if you saw it, but um, recently the same uh, in the AI space, they had Joe Rogan and Steve Jobs. Yeah. And 19 cool. minutes do like a mashup of an interview. Um, you have an amazing, I won't call it a podcast. I'll call it an amazing show. The talk um, show. Yeah, absolutely. What, what were like maybe four or five of the biggest lessons you learned from season one of High Level Conversations? Um, one of the things that we didn't do was master our data. Uh, we are in the age where everybody is happy about analytics, but we don't own the data. So mm. we get to see aspects of the data. YouTube doesn't give us all the data. Instagram don't give us all of the data. On the back end, they have a master file that is way more complex, where if we had that information, we'll be able to do and target in ways that are un- target like Yeah. With no complete income levels, we have no taste, desires of customers, we have no exact regions and everything. So without having that data, you don't really control your audience. You have access to your audience, right? So with getting, you know, millions, probably up to like 15 plus million views right now in the span of a few months, we don't own that data yet, right? So Right now, it's about if I were to put in mechanisms in place to make sure that we own that data from day one, the equity and the value of the show would be quadruple than what it is currently. It's still valuable. Mm-hmm. Still got the top show you know, I'm about in the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all I'm saying. So um, another thing is factoring in audio, right? Our audio experience. So we don't often push the audio experience. So right now, visual and video is highly successful because it's a visual experience, right? You're getting the B-rolls, you're getting the overlay text, right? And I mean, we always showing the fly. The set is always beautiful. So production is on point and it's on key, right? But from an audio experience standpoint, that number is not as strong as video. So now it's about making sure that we increase the audio experience and make yeah. sure people just know it's there so that we can get into more countries, get into more households and get into flow of people that's on the move. And that really just simply looks like, you know, um, posting clips with synth waves of people talking, right? With quotes on there so that people can understand like, oh, I can listen to this too. I don't have to spend a couple of hours watching this, right? So I will say that that's a key. Um, Another, you know, when we first started, we didn't have all our creatives in place, right? I knew I had big ideas as far as how I wanted to do the thumbnails, how I wanted everything to roll out. So making sure that you got your full vision set as far as how robust that team, you always have to plan to succeed, right? And I don't think everybody plans to succeed. You plan, a lot of people plan to do okay, right? So when I say succeed, like overwhelming success to where it's like, all right, now that you're at this level, what you going to do? And that means that you need to understand the business. So if you don't get into podcasting or media or creating a talk show, understanding the back end of the business goes directly to how you design the show, right? So therefore, I want to understand how ads work. I want to understand how media work. I want to understand how multi-channel networks work. I want to understand what is a hit show? What is the criteria when I get a million views, two million views? What are the ways that people are selling content? What are the million ways that I can actually leverage it? Because once you become a player in the space, you now have a different level of value that you can leverage based on the equity that you put into that show. So for me, that's super key. Uh, and then last but not least, you know, I think there's some things you're supposed to learn on the go. Um, yeah. That's the beautiful thing because you get organic market viability. So they tell you what they actually like instead of you telling the customers what you like, right? Because I believe in 
building a community and then finding a way to service that community with a product or things of that nature. So the value chain is different. It's not what you want to sell, it's what they actually want, right? Absolutely. Times, that's a much better business model. So right now, creating our newsletters, I would have put a Discord at the beginning of high-level conversations, and we have one rolling out because I want the community to be able to engage afterwards. Everybody goes in their silos. They have conversations about high-level conversations. So now it's time to curate that. And I get yeah. so many people that come to me and want to be on the show. And number one, you know, each show requires a certain budget. So I can't just say, oh, yes, you want to be on. You got a voice. Everybody gets on. That's not how I operate. So, you know, I want a component called High Level Voices, where it's a much shorter version, maybe 10, 19 minutes, where we get to highlight some of the intellectual voices in our community. My graduates from my school being Forbes, backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> A mic drop. Bag drop. Bag drop.